my name is Vanity and I'm a children's survivor advocate at First Step. One thing that I would tell parents um, or children who are in situations where violence is happening at home is that there are people who care, um, there are people who want them safe and that they're not alone. Um, we care, we're here for them. If they can just you know, pick up the phone and give us a call, we'll do whatever we can to extend a hand and, and to help them. So my primary role is actually giving counseling services to children. So um, kids as young as three all the way up to 18, I meet with uh, mostly one-on-one -on -one, um, to provide counseling that focuses on helping them to safety plan, um, helping them to talk about their feelings, um, to be educated about um, the different types of violence that they might be witnessing in their home, and also to help them figure out healthier ways to uh, solve problems and to deal with their emotions. So First Step does have a number of resources that it helps provide parents so that they can um, be better parents. So the first thing is that parents are actually able to meet one-on-one -on -one with a children's advocate to get personalized parenting support and education. So they get to bring in their specific concerns um, for their children, for their family, and process that and brainstorm and come up with solutions with an advocate. Um, we also offer a parenting support group where parents are able to come in and have the support and feedback of other parents who are in their shoes so that they realize they're not alone um, and they have people who are parenting through the same circumstances as they do. Um, and then just the individual counseling, you know, by parents coming in and meeting with their own advocates, they're taking care of themselves in order to be better parents to their children. Yeah, so domestic and sexual violence um, can have such a huge impact on children in a number of different ways. Um, one of the biggest pieces that we see is the emotional impact. Um, we have children who come to us who are really living in fear, who um, are really struggling with sadness and with anger about you know, what has either happened to them or about what they're witnessing. Um, a lot of kids um, end up having behavioral problems where you know, they don't have a healthy outlet for what's happened to them or what they're experiencing. And so um, they might act out at home or in school um, and really just not understand how to um, respond to life um, in ways that aren't violent, that um, aren't hurtful because of what they've experienced or what they've seen. Um, and a lot of kids also feel really alone. Um, they feel really isolated um, because they think that maybe they're the only ones that this has happened to or that their family is the only one that's affected in this way. Um, kids often do feel like domestic violence is their fault. Um, sometimes an argument might start because of something that was happening with the children. Um, and kids, when they hear those things, they, they take it in as, okay, well, this is my fault. My, it, I'm the reason that my parents aren't getting along or that someone's being hurt. Um, and so a big part of what we do in the children's program is to inform and educate kids about what the causes of violence are and helping them to know that domestic violence, sexual violence, none of that is ever their fault. Uh, violence can really um, undermine the relationship that non-abusive parents have with their children. A lot of times what parents will share with us is that their children, because of what they witnessed or experienced, are starting to take on um, abusive or hurtful beliefs about how to treat other people um, and even how to treat that non-abusive parent. Um, sometimes kids will say things like they're not quite sure if that non-abusive parent can keep them safe um, because of what's going on in the home. And so sometimes kids don't trust that parent as much or they feel like they can't go to that parent because of what that parent is experiencing. Um, so it can really drive a wedge between the child and that non-abusive parent um, just because there's just so much going on in the home. It doesn't always leave a lot of room for those healthy connections. So I think one case um, that really stood out to me um, was probably a teenager that I worked with not too long ago. And one thing that was so impressive to me was that this teenager was able to really stand up and eventually be their own advocate. Um, they were able to talk to uh, a judge that was involved in custody decisions and to have their voice heard and to talk about what they had gone through, um, what they had witnessed and also the healing that they felt they were experiencing by 
you know, the separation that had happened. And so um, to just witness this child's bravery and their ability to stand up for themselves, um, I think is something that continues to inspire me in my work with kids. First Step actually provides a number of different resources um, and experiences for children. So um, one of the first things that pops out is our playground um, in our shelter space where children are able to um, go through and have this really uniquely built area where they can play and explore. Um, there's a garden there where children a lot of times are able to kind of pitch in in terms of, you know, growing their own food. Um, you know, they're able to play sports. There's a splash pad out on the playground. Um, and a lot of times um, families are able to, you know, just spend time together in that space. Um, and, you know, for kids, it's really important because, you know, maybe they can't be out in the community at a normal park, but they've got this space that, you know, feels safe for them and they still get to have fun in the same ways that other kids do. Um, not only that, but, you know, we do have, you know, tons of events that happen throughout the year for kids, um, especially surrounding the holidays. You know, there'll be, you know, Christmas gifts, you know, tons of donations that come in from the community. Families are able to, you know, shop for their children. Um, they're able to um, participate in, you know, trick-or-treating events in a safe space. Um, not only that, too, but we take kids on field trips. They're able to get out into the community and explore. Um, we also have, you know, birthday parties and different events where other organizations will come in and help host um, things so that, you know, our children in our shelter and in our programs have um, the same experiences that their peers do. I think what makes First Steps so unique is that everyone is so down to earth. Um, one of the things that I hear from clients all the time and that I see is that clients really feel comfortable at first step. Um, they're able to talk with us in a way where, you know, they don't feel like they're being looked down on. They feel like they're valued. They feel like they're important. Um, and everyone kind of maintains that atmosphere. So um, I think just, you know, everyone's, you know, honest and open and friendly and approachable. Um, and we really care about what we do and we make sure that we show that. I love the people that I work with. Um, I absolutely am inspired every single day um, by how dedicated everybody is. I mean, advocates, first responders, volunteers, administrative people. I mean, everyone's so passionate about the work that we do. Um, and I get to see day in and day out how what we do impacts clients in a really meaningful way. Um, you know, even from just, you know, answering a phone call, answering a quick question to helping someone find shelter and get safe. Um, everyone is passionate about what they do and I love it. Happy anniversary, first step.